Hi, Fluffy. Hi, baby. What are you doing? Are you good? Oh, come on. Let's go. Let's go together. Elvi, what are we doing? Good. Good. Okay. What are we putting online today? Doomsayer. Doomsayer. <laughs> Doomsayer. We got both, both of them too, right? This is yeah. great. All right, Room 101 stuff is showing up. Is that more Espinosa too over there? Yeah. Okay, good. Actually, did you guys already finish packing all the orders for today? We're done. Oh my gosh, look at Abby. She looks exhausted from this. Abby, what are you doing? Hi, Abby. Oh, hi, honey. Okay. What's happening, guys? It's an amazing day at the HQ, and I wanted to take you guys inside the shop today to talk about something with your collection that's a huge deal, because when you buy cigars with your hard-earned money, you want to enjoy them, presumably. I would think that you do. And so... You've got to think about 10 million little things when you're going to like put your collection into stasis until you pull them out to smoke them. There's, there's the humidity, there's the temperature, there's the seal on your humidor. There's all kinds of things. But today I want to talk to you about one really dangerous thing for your cigar uh, that can throw your collection off really bad if you don't get this one thing right. And I actually have a perfect example to show you of this today. Uh, but I got a couple things to do around here first. Ellie, you need to go potty? Let's go. Come on. Let's go potty. All right, come on. Let's go. Here we are. Yeah. Mush. Ellie, come. I guess you don't have to go to the bathroom, do you? All right. Oh, now you want to go to the bathroom. All right, we can do that. What's happening here? What is this? What sampler is this one? This is the whiskey pairing. Ooh, whiskey. With the whiskey glasses? Yes. Good. I'm just gonna solve the mystery. We're getting a lot of samplers done today, huh? A lot. All right, let me take this girl out. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Good girl, my Ellie girl. Hey, hey Justin, how are you doing, man? <laughs> doing good, brother. Dude, how's everything by you? You doing good? Yeah, man, doing good, you know, just, uh, having fun and, and uh trying to uh to, to finish the year strong so uh stay yeah. busy good man well i wanted to call you real quick about the barrel aging tobacco we kicked off this year all right dude this i am is, uh, this is the kind of call i don't mind taking this is, uh, <laughs> this is actually exciting there are worse calls that, that will come in this week for both of us i know um <laughs> dude it's going really well i've done the rotations uh have you seen any of the videos I have been, man. I've been, uh, I've been following along, and I and I've got to tell you, you've uh, you've been doing a good job. So. Thank you, thank you, dude. I I'm amazed at the result and the sweetness and the bourbon like bourbony flavor that that binder leaf is getting. Man, it is a great process. It really, uh, I I like to tell people, it's not a substitute for the tobacco flavor, but it's definitely supplements the the natural flavors of the tobacco. So it's a it's a really cool, uh, cool addition to an already, you know, great flavor profile. Absolutely. I, I am getting one question, though, I haven't really known how to answer. This is my only hold up right now. Everyone wants to know what I'm going to do when I'm done with this, when I'm done with all the barrel aging. What am I going to do with all the tobacco? And I, we didn't talk about that before we started this. I was just so excited that, to get it done that I didn't consider. I've got actually two barrels filled with now barrel aged tobacco. And, you know, in my mind, there's a lot of complications right now. Everybody's trying to work to get cigars rolled and, and there's backlogs and stuff. And so is, I'm, I'm wondering if there's even anything we can do with this stuff. You know, we might have to uh, to try to put our heads together and, uh, and and see what we can do, see what we can come up with, because um, it would be it would be a shame to let uh, let all that good tobacco go to waste. Uh -huh. I don't know, maybe maybe you and I can uh, can catch a flight to Nicaragua and come back with some uh, some wrapper and, and filler leaf in our suitcase. Man. Don't you tempt me with a good time, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know who's the best next person to call, but I'm guessing you do. So if you want to start, you know, kind of chasing down that rabbit hole and just let me know what you need from me, we'll, we'll figure out if we can make something happen. Yeah, I'm sure we can we can find a way to, to put that tobacco to use. We can, uh, we'll be able to come up with something. All right, man. Well, that sounds good. Thank you for all your help with this. This has been such a cool experience. I think everybody enjoyed watching the progress of the of the leaf as well and how it's come along. 
Man, no, thank you for uh, for allowing me to be a part of it. I, I like everyone else, have enjoyed uh, kind of following along and, and watching the process and uh, the development of the tobacco. So, and and I also am curious to uh, to see what we can do and, and, and smoke a finished product. So, Hell yeah. I'm excited. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you, dude. Let me know what you find out, all right? All right, will do, Tim. Thank you. All right, I'll see you. All right, so I've got my day pretty well squared away now, so I can finally take you guys in. Do you hear this? Look at this. Ellie, no barking. What are you thinking? What are you th oh, you're barking at that guy out there. All right, well, please don't do it anyway. So now I think I've got my day pretty well squared away. Hope to hear something good from Justin Andrews. That would be really exciting. And I want to take you guys back inside this little cigar care tip. The one thing that freaks me out more than anything about cigars, and it's in my humidor in the office here, so I got to take you guys in there. This has nothing to do with mold or tobacco beetles or those cheap friends who are always trying to take your cigars and smoke two inches of them and then like put the thing down and never light it again. This has to do with one critical thing that's all around us all around the world and that's light take a look here so this is my Adu humidor I reviewed this one on the channel I keep it in the office you can see it's very messy very poorly kept I just cram cigars in here all the time now you guys are going to see sort of what I keep in here too uh, this has got all kinds of stuff in it from special edition Olivas to some of these limited edition Brazilian shades that I like so much but really up here in the top is what I want you to see you can see a light that is shining down on the cigars in the top row and that light shines really specifically just on one cigar and this came up this week when I actually opened this and open now let me see you got to open the door all the way to pull this stupid thing out okay my like one of my biggest complaints about this humidor so there it is so this is my cigar I have no idea what this cigar is but it was the one sitting at the top right underneath the lights and you can see the perfect outline of the two little LED light nodes in the top that are broadcasting on this thing they have completely bleached this leaf right where those lights were shining and that's a huge deal it's a great observation on exactly what light does to a leaf it absolutely obliterates the leaf so this one sits right there and you can even see where the light shines like right directly on it as I push the thing back in. If you've got a collection at home and your humidor is like a glass top humidor or Tupperware or the acrylic jar and it's sitting next to a window, this would be a good time to move it to a darker place because light definitely has an effect on these things. You don't have to worry about this too much in most humidors that you go into like a cigar shop humidor because the idea at any cigar shop is that you're rotating your stock. You've got enough stock for like a month or two months and that stuff is selling and moving out so it doesn't spend too long in there the cigar I just pulled out of my humidor has been in there for it maybe it's been three or four months now and really directly under those light nodes but if your humidor is sitting at like on the shelf in a windowsill where the light is shining directly on it or it's under something where there's constant light or you got a humidor like this one you want to be really cognizant of letting that leaf be exposed to that light because light can kill tobacco so just to add one more thing to the list of stuff to worry about with your collection light of all things all right guys what is it that you deal with with your cigar collection what are the biggest issues you have i want to create videos answering those things and thank you guys for letting me take you inside a little bit of the day here because it's always fun and interesting at cigars daily hey guys thank you so much for hanging out with me here and check this video out on cigarsdailyplus.com thank you all so much for watching this is Tim signing off for Cigars Daily, and I will see you in the comments.